For a long time, physicists have assumed the basis of the universe was matter. Others have assumed it was subatomic particles or space-time itself. But what if the universe was actually made of information? Let's explore this relatively new but yet very promising theory in today's video. But before we start, if you would like to be notified of whenever I post a new article on my platform Noviria, as well as when my first immersive course on time and time travel will be launched, you can subscribe to my mailing list. The link is in the description below. Only takes a few seconds. Thank you so, so much. Physicist John Wheeler once said that the universe had three parts. First, everything is particles. Second, everything is fields. And finally, everything is information. Physicist Paul Davis also pointed out something very interesting. He said that historically, matter has been at the bottom of the explanatory chain and information has been a sort of secondary derivative of it. Now, he said that if we were to turn this upside down, maybe the universe is actually all about information and information processing, and it is matter that emerges as a secondary concept. Now, why do some physicists believe that information could be the most fundamental aspect of our physical reality? Let's talk about quantum mechanics first. There's something in quantum mechanics called quantum information. Quantum information basically describes the state of any quantum system. We know that each subatomic particle, such as an electron or a photon, holds information about its own state, its wave function, for example, its location, or whether it's spinning up or down. In quantum entanglement, entangled particles actually exchange information with one another, despite being distances apart. Not only that, but we could also say that subatomic particles obey a specific program, a specific set of instructions, right? They're, they all have a specific role uh, as if they were programmed a certain way, otherwise everything would be completely random and chaotic. It's kind of like uh, the cells in our body which also obey a set of instructions, they also have their own roles and properties that are supervised by the mind. MIT professor Seth Lloyd actually proposed that subatomic particles could be described and translated into binary code. The spin of a particle, whether up or down, could be translated by a 1 or a 0. The term it from bit, it meaning any particle or any field, and from bit meaning from a bit, so 1 or 0, was actually coined by John Wheeler himself in the 80s when he started to uh, explore the connection between information theory and quantum mechanics. Now let's talk about information theory. Information theory was created, or at least brought forward, by engineer Claude Shannon in the mid-1900s. Claude Shannon is actually considered to be the father of the digital age. It all started after he noticed a close relationship between Boolean algebra, which is also known as binary algebra, and uh, telephone circuits which led him to be hired by Bell Labs in order to find a way to transfer information over wires. He was the first one to connect mathematics with electrical systems. Nowadays, his method is used to design microchips, TVs, and pretty much any type of hardware. Now, why is this relevant to our quest, you may wonder? Well, simply because, like we've seen, particles can be translated by binary code and many scientists believe the way the universe processes information is very similar to computers. The concept that the universe could be described as a supercomputer was first introduced in the 1960s by Ed Fredkin and Conrad Zeus, respectively. According to them, we could call the universe a cellular automaton, a dynamic system which could be broken apart into white and black grids, and uh, in which cells would uh, gather information about the surrounding cells and therefore communicate, as if they were not only the programs, but also the programmers. Now, what is the difference between a regular computer and a quantum computer? In a regular computer, information is encoded as bits, right? Zero or a one. We've seen this before. A quantum computer, however, uses quantum bits instead of regular bits. What's so special about quantum bits, you may wonder? Well, quantum bits can either be at one state or another, or 
in a superposition state, meaning in between the two. That way, quantum computers can store much more information and process it way faster than traditional computers. Now, Seth Lloyd, who is not only an MIT professor, but also one of the leaders in the field of quantum information, stated that a computer is a system that breaks up information to bits and that flips those bits in a systematic fashion. So subatomic particles may be the bits the universe is processing. Since the universe is best understood or best described by quantum mechanics, Lloyd suggested that quantum computing allows us to understand the universe in its own language. Let's talk about entropy now. <laughs> entropy describes the amount of disorder in a closed system, it is the second law of thermodynamics. It also states that entropy in a system can never decrease, it always either increases or remains constant. The overall energy of the universe also always remains constant. Now there is a principle called the Landauer's principle, which affirms that whenever information is erased somewhere in the universe, the whole universe reacts and basically transfer it in the form of heat elsewhere in the universe. That way, information can never be destroyed. Now we can link all of this to the holographic principle, where the third dimensional reality is considered to be an illusion created by the information encoded on a two dimensional plane. The third dimensional reality is therefore a hologram. We'll talk about the holographic principle in future videos because this is, of course, a very, very interesting subject. Um, but basically, information would unify many fields in modern physics, such as loop quantum gravity and string theory, which I will talk about in more depth in my course on time, as well as quantum mechanics and cosmology. Could this be the solution to many of our problems in physics? We don't know yet. To string theorist Raphael Busso, information is not just a tool of measure, it is a primary constituent of what is happening in the world. Information is not so much modeling the system, it is the system. Reality won't work unless information is, in some sense, real. All right, this is the end of the video. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you did, you can leave a like. That would make me very happy. <laughs> and you can also subscribe to my channel. That would also make me very happy. You can uh, follow me on Instagram and support my work on Patreon as well. Uh, I will start posting behind the scenes videos of the making up of my, um, my immersive course, which is actually uh, very demanding. I'm doing a lot of things with Unreal Engine that I can't wait to share with you. So if you were a bit curious as to what I'm doing right now and how I'm doing it, uh, you can just go check out my Patreon page and support me in the process. Thank you so much. Make sure you're subscribed to my mailing list as well. That's very important and I will see you very soon with a new video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.